Welcome to Miss Grover's Storytime. Today, we're going to read my favorite book, The Monster at the End of This Book, starring lovable furry old Grover. Oh. I'm not reading to six and seven and eight year olds? Sixth, seventh, and eighth graders? Well then, I guess I have to read a different story. Welcome to Miss Grover's first chapter story time. Today, we're going to read the first chapter of A Night Divided by Jennifer A. Nielsen. The Death Strip. In September 1961, a woman talks to her relatives through the barbed wire fence separating East and West Berlin. East Berlin border guards add barbed wire to the wall in November 1961. A map showing the boundaries of the Berlin Wall and the sectors into which the city is divided by the victors of World War II. Truly, it is in darkness that one finds the light. Mr. Eckhart, German philosopher. A Night Divided Chapter 1 When I want the West to scream, I squeeze on Berlin. Nikita Khrushchevich Soviet Union Premier, 1958 to 1964. There was no warning the night the wall went up. I woke to sirens screaming throughout my city of East Berlin. Instantly, I flew from my bed. Something must be terribly wrong. Why were there so many? Although it was a warm morning, that wasn't the reason for my sweaty palms or flushed face. My first thought was that it must be an air raid. My parents had described them to me from the Second World War. I pulled my curtains apart, expecting the worst. But when I looked out, my heart slammed into my throat. Not even the darkest part of my imagination could have prepped me for this. It was Sunday, August 13, 1961, a day I would remember for the rest of my life, when a prison had been built around us as we slept. The line of Gresner's, our nickname for the border police, the Gresen Trippen, stood guard among a fence of thorny wire, in some places higher than their heads. And for as far as my eyes could see, they stood like iron statues with stern expressions and long rifles in their hands. It was obvious that anyone who tried to cross would get far worse than a rip on their clothes, because the Gresners didn't face the Westerners on the other side of the fence. They watched us. It was very clear who they planned to shoot if there was any trouble. If only I looked out earlier. During the night, I heard strange noises of hammering, heavy footsteps, and a hushed conversations from men with sharp voices. But I rolled over, told myself it was only a dream, or a nightmare, perhaps. If I had looked, I would have warned my family in time, just as our neighbor, Herr Cross, tried to warn us. He knew this was coming. Hadn't he said for years our government was not to be trusted? That night, we might salute to the flag of East Germany, but it was really Russia we bowed to? And my father had known. My father! As if she had heard my thoughts. From out in the kitchen, I heard Mama cry, Aldous! That was his name. And with a final glance out the window, I remembered the reason for Mama's screams. My father wasn't here nor was my brother Dominic. They had been in the West for two nights and were supposed to come home later today. With the endless row of guns and soldiers between us, the fence had just changed that. I raced from my room and arrived in the kitchen to see my oldest brother, Fritz, holding my mother in his arms as she sobbed on his shoulder. He eyed me and then cocked his head toward the window in case I hadn't already seen the fence. 
I only brushed tears from my eyes and wrapped my arms around her back. Maybe she didn't need me, but in that moment, I desperately needed her. She felt me there and put a shaking hand on my arm. They've done it, Greta, she said through her tears, worse than anyone ever thought. Mama had been a beautiful woman once, but it was years ago. She had come through too much war and famine and poverty to care about the curl in her hair or the neatness of her dress. Her blonde hair was already turning gray, and her eyes bore early wrinkles in the creases. Sometimes I looked in the mirror and hoped life would not be equally hard on me. Why now, I asked. Why today? I looked up to Fritz for an answer. He was nearly six years older than me and the smartest person I knew, next to my father. If my mother had no answers, then surely he did. But all he could do was shrug, hold her tighter as her sobs grew louder. Perhaps I already understood more than I wanted to. The fence was only the beginning. He had just divided my life in half, and nothing would ever be the same again. Check out more books by this author. Thank you for letting me join you on First Chapter Friday's Westfield. Bye!